Okay. So, what is what? What's going on? What's happening? Um, let's talk about something really neat. Although, <laughs> there's not much to talk about because I have limited information. Um, now that the megapixel wars are pretty much over, and I can even take a 16 megapixel cam, I can even take a 12 megapixel raw image and end up printing out a uh, 8 by 12 poster for advertising that hangs in the megapixel wars are really over. So what's the next war? The next war is dynamic range. I'm going to tell you about something super magical that's coming down the pike to a camera near you. Now, I do have a couple people on the inside. What? Me? Yeah, I, I do. So what's happening? Well, this is interesting news. Um, it's kind of something that I've thought about that obviously has to occur because right now we have uh, dual layer uh, bear arrays for uh, uh, increasing uh, the image output that's uh, captured to the card. But I have found out there's something going to be called uh, SVCG, selective, uh, selective Variable Capacitance Gain. What it does is applies the selective resistance zoning uh, for absolutely stunning dynamic range. So dyna from what I can gather, from what I've been told, dynamic range is going to essentially triple, if not nearly triple. I mean, I, I don't have specifics. I was told this. Um, from the information that I gathered, it's extremely logical. What it is, it's going to apply uh, selective resistance zoning, say, Here's a really tough scene. You got, you're standing back here, you got a person in a dark cave, like, waving at you. And, uh, out here you just got bright, blasting-ass sunlight. I mean, unless you want to do uh, HDR and stick your camera on a tripod, you're screwed. Um, but at apparently, uh, shutter speeds, uh, from what I've told that it can't do high shutter speeds, but at, uh, at uh, lower shutter speeds and uh, lower ISOs, that you will have at about, you know, these horrible dynamic range shots, you will have the availability in most uh, instances to uh, nearly triple the dynamic range of your shot. And what it does is that, obviously, blown highlights are blown highlights. I mean, even on the raw image, what's blown at the photo site is lost. Obviously, what is not there can be pulled forward. You can actually raise your exposure. But what's blown is blown. So, for instance, so now, uh, as an example, we have a person in a dark cave, and we have, you know, the trees over here in the bright sunlight, and you're, you're framing both of these. Or white water situations, like a beach scene, kind of the same thing. What it does is it recognizes uh, the overgain of that particular area, and it applies resistance to the bright areas to level it out, and then you can work with it in RAW so you don't have blown the highlights. And so what you have, in one shot, handheld, you have a, a really, really high quality uh, HDR image that would be equivalent to uh, taking, you know, four to seven uh, shots uh, for high dynamic range. And that is uh, rather fascinating. That is what a lot of people have wanted. It applies a, a contrast ratio so that I don't know how uh, the processing works, but apparently the processing works at the at the at the level of uh, the sensor. You don't know if it's a secondary processor or not. I wasn't given that information. That this uh, SVCG selective variable capacitance gain is applied. It's like I said, that it drops the gain on whichever area of the sensor is getting too much light, and so what it does is it brings it more towards the shadow detail. So you got incredible dynamic range on a shot that. You know, all the fiddling in the world and uh, in, uh, in uh, Lightroom. Now, you, you can do a lot of this stuff right now, uh, but uh, that obviously uh, slows down your workflow. Being able to do that at uh, some slower shutter speeds, basically like at the shutter speeds of flash photography, is absolutely fascinating. Apparently, also what I gather, this requires a, a secondary set of processors and power drain, and uh, God knows how fast the... the the image sensor has to be to adjust immediately for that and apply resistance to the overexposed areas, but it's perfectly sensible. And I had a discussion for a nice uh, half hour there. And uh, so that's really interesting. So apparently that's what's coming down the corner. Now the megapixel wars are over, and uh, also as Canon has introduced, everything is going to uh, DX uh, pixel photosite densities on full frame sensors. The next war is dynamic range, and apparently the the uh, technology for this uh, selective resistance zoning, or SRZ, 
is being applied to uh, sensors so that, you know, nearly three times as much dynamic range without doing HDR photography is rather fascinating. Um, that's, that's some interesting stuff. I mean, you got two types of noise. You got a highlight gain that drowns the details, and you got uh, ISO digital gain, which introduces the uh, artifacts and noise. Um, but that's fascinating. So I thought you all like to hear that. Um, you can call BS on me for stating this, but it was a real conversation, and apparently it's real technology that's rolling down the pike. So whether you believe it or not, I don't care. I thought I'd introduce that. I thought it was really fascinating and it was uh, very logical and uh, it's interesting to know that uh, that's what's rolling rolling uh, down uh, across the bend uh, for future uh, DSLR photography. Okay, bye.